Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our course. Next, we are going to introduce a famous distributed computing framework, which is called MapReduce. So again, let's take a look at what is MapReduce. MapReduce provides parallel and offline computing of large-scale datasets, which are usually greater than one terabyte. And here we can find three features of MapReduce as well. The first one is functional programming. When using MapReduce, the programmer only needs to describe what to do. To be more specific, we only need to tell MapReduce how to do the map and how to do the reduce, as well as define where to read and write data. And then the execution framework of the system processes the details automatically. So you even do not need to know how to split different tasks into subtasks and how to do the parallel computation by distribute data onto different servers. Secondly, good scalability. Because MapReduce also uses the distributed framework to do parallel computing, so you can always add nodes to expand the cluster capability. And thirdly, high fault tolerance. MapReduce uses policies such as computing migration or data migration to improve cluster availability and fault tolerance. But you may still be wondering what is the basic functionality of MapReduce. So in the following several pages, we are going to show you the basic functionality of MapReduce by the examples of what count. But before that, we need to say, MapReduce can do various of statistics. And we say that in a more general case, MapReduce classifies a bunch of unorganized data based on certain features, calculates and processes the data, and obtains the final result. And as the name implies, the MapReduce calculation process can be divided into two phases, the map phase and the reduce phase. The output result of the map phase is the input of the reduce phase. The map phase parses each piece of data and extracts the key and value, that is, extracts the features of the data. And then in the reduce phase, Data is organized by key, followed by several values. These values are related. On this basis, we can do further processing to get the result. And a word count program is just an application that helps to count the number of occurrence of each word in a file, or namely, the term frequency. For example, Below, you can find the left graph, which is a file that contains some unorganized sentences as the input data. And we expect the right-hand side as the output, which means that the word by appears three times. The word Hadoop appears four times. Hello appears three times. and the vocabulary word appears twice in the input. And with the result, we can further do some data mining processes, like in NLP applications, we may need to calculate the TF-IDF value of each term. But how does MapReduce do word count? Here, we have a simplified example of processes. Firstly, in the map phase, the system helps to split the big files into several 128 megabytes data pieces, and the number of splits determines the number of map tasks. For example, if the file is 1 gigabyte, then there will be 8 splits as a result, and thus there are 8 map tasks. In our slide, 
we pretend to split the input into three split. So there are three map tasks. And each map task deals with one split and make the sentences in the format of key value pairs. You can find that in WordCompt, the map task just flatten the sentences into individual words as keys and simply give us the value one, meaning that the word appears once. The output of map tasks are kept on the local file system of map servers, but now each key may appear more than just once. For example, hello appears many times, right? But the value is always one. So naturally, we need to sum up the values with the same key. But before that, there are some other steps. For example, the system can do a sort process locally to sort the keys in the alphabetical order and then combine the key value pairs locally to reduce the number of key value pairs, right? To be shuffled onto reduced servers. You can find that a combine is just a local reduce, and then because the reduce task may not be run on the same server as map tasks, and also in reduce phase, all data with the same key needs to be transmitted to the same server, so there is a shuffle process, which helps to collect the data to reduce tasks. Now, the shuffle process copies data from map servers and transmit data to reduce servers, which consumes many I.O. resources and network resources. So MapReduce is not fast at all. It can only be used in offline calculation, and the number of reduced tasks are determined by users. By default, there is just one reduced task, and the result is written into the same file on HDFS. But we can modify the number if the data is very large. For example, we can define the number of reduced tasks as 4 here. Then there will be 4 outputs in HDFS as the result of this application. So up to now, we have finished the introduction of MapReduce WordCamp. But in fact, this is relatively a simplified process. And if you are interested, there can be more details to be looked up in your leisure time. So that is all for this chapter. In this chapter, we mentioned an overview of MapReduce and its features and introduced the map phase and the reduce phase with an example of process of using MapReduce to perform word count application. Hope you guys enjoy all the contents in this chapter and see you in the next chapter.